As we travel around the country visiting collision repair facilities, we see a lot of great things. We also see some things that maybe could use a little bit of improvement. One of those areas that is not only a safety issue for the repairs, but also for you as a technician, is your pre-weld routine. Let's talk a little bit about the gas metal arc or GMAW pre-welding routine that you should be going through each and every repair. Start by removing any clutter from the machine. Oftentimes we'll have remnants from a previous repair, some practice coupons on the machine, as well as garbage, maybe some paper from the OEM procedure or other materials that we use to prep and clean an area. Also make sure there's no hazardous materials in the area that could ignite from a rogue spark. You want to inspect the welding gun. Make sure that the welding uh, gun itself has no cracks or damage to the handle, as well as making sure that the cables aren't uh, frayed, that there's no loose wires, that there's no damage to the sheath on there. Uh, that could not only be a safety issue, but it could also be a performance issue. You'll also want to inspect the ground clamp or work clamp. Make sure that the wire is secure to the ground clamp itself and make sure there's no damage to the wiring. Also inspect the power cable, making sure that it's not damaged. Verify that you not only have shielding gas in the shielding gas cylinder, but make sure that's the proper shielding gas. Usually it's going to be a 75-25 mixture of argon and CO2, uh, also commonly called C25, but not all. So make sure that the shielding gas that you have matches the OEM recommendations. Open the side panel and inspect the electro wire. Confirm that you have the proper type, usually ER70S6, maybe ER70S3, and the proper electro wire diameter. More often than not, if we're working on a unibody, that's going to be 023, 024, 025. If we're working on some thicker material, probably 030 or 035. After inspecting the electrical wire, verify that the drive roll matches the electrical wire diameter. If it's too large, it won't feed in the machine. If it's too small, it could damage the electrical wire. Also inspect the shielding gas nozzle and the contact tip. Verify that the contact tip size matches the electrical wire diameter. If it's too large, the electrical wire may wander as it leaves the contact tip. And if it's too small, the electrical wire won't fit through it. Make sure that the polarity is set properly. Some machines offer the ability to change from DCEP, electropositive, to DCEN, electronegative. We want to make sure for collision repair steel welding applications that we're using DCEP. Most welding machine manufacturers offer information on where to set the parameters as a starting location for the material thickness that you'd be welding on. Before making your practice welds, set the voltage and wire speed based on the machine manufacturer's recommendations and then fine tune it from there as you make those practice welds. And don't forget to turn the shielding gas on and make sure that the flow rate is set appropriately, usually between 25 and 30 CFH. With your pre-weld routine complete, it's time to start making practice welds. When you make those practice welds, make them on the same type and thickness of material and in the same position. To learn more about that, check out our video on making practice welds from the Collision Hub World's Fair.